How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to take this thing out, it was a KRS 58 Bandit and uh, yeah, see how it stacks up against the others. Um, the main two tyres I'm going to be using is the MUDs and the Chained or the version of Chained it gives us and uh, yeah, we'll get stuck in and have a look. So as far as engines go, it's got a pretty good selection to be fair. All the way down the bottom it's S Plus and stuff, the other ones drop slightly, slightly improved fuel consumption, all the normal stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm going for the strongest engine. I'm going for the high range gearbox because it's got like enough power with it to uh, get the most out of it. There is no raised suspension. As for the tyres, yeah they're not the greatest selection. You've got these custom muds which are handy in some situations, then you've got these chained but they're not like normally on a lot of, like the Dolphin and various other trucks. You've got the chained version of the MUDs, whereas their chained version, I think, of the off-roads, and they're just nowhere near as good. They don't bite in the same. Um, yeah, you've only got the custom MUDs as well, so you haven't got, like, the more normal MUDs. Uh, the winch, I'm going for, like, the best one. Uh, the snorkel, it's almost up to the roof, but not quite. Um, yeah, as for all the add-ons, I think there's just about everything. Uh, I suppose there's not actually a large crane as well. Um, yeah, the roof rack, you can add on that. I'm not going to have it in on this video because they can it can affect the weight, it can affect tipping it and stuff so uh, I'll get on to that in a minute but yeah obviously with a small fuel tank it could do with it. Uh, as for the bumpers looking through them to be honest the stock bumper seems like it yeah sticks out the least if you can see from the boxes in the background that bumper makes you change your view so I can't line it up really as well but that's like one of those bumpers with a frame all around the bandit. Uh, yeah like I say I've just gone for the stock one because it seems fairly nicely tucked in it works pretty well with it and uh, as for the camos we've got, well, that's what it looks like in black grey and white it's got slightly like it's already got mud and that splashed up it doesn't really look like a brand new paint job Um, yeah you've got the red orange and black you've got like a pink one a white one that reminds me of like a 1980s shell suit <laughs> like going skiing or something that not too keen on that brown one uh, yeah I'm going for this in the end the black one with the uh, red and orange stripes looks pretty cool as far as the truck goes, I've, again I've put the muds on at the minute, I prefer the look of the muds easily. It also helps with not tipping, but uh, yeah again I'll sort of get into that as we go through it. Having a little look inside, apparently this was based off like a bus chassis or something, which it does have like a certain bus feel to it. The uh, mirrors I can't really see at all, and there is no view out the back, there's just like a load of seats like ready to play poker or something. Uh, when you look out the back though, I can see Lear <laughs> of the clear. Uh, sign on the garage, so there's not too bad views out the back. I can see my tides as well. The horn, yeah, it'd be all right if that was on like a scout, but it's a little bit, <laughs> a little bit weak for a, for a truck. It's got no rev counter, unfortunately, so I can't tell if it's like flying up the revs pretty quick or not. It's a bit deceiving. Some trucks that sound like they're going up the revs, like that Western Star 49X, plenty of power, goes very slow through the revs, and it's a very low rev range in itself. Um, yeah, all the trailers, I think it's just about every trailer you can get, that's the new 8th slot. It didn't let me equip it because it's like it's sticking too far out, <laughs> that's definitely what she said, but it already put the uh, saddle high on, I just noticed that the other day as well, that you don't actually have to equip the trailer if you just kind of select it, even if it says, if it moans about it for some reason, it seems to uh, stick a saddle on. So anyway, yeah, we'll uh, set off, like I say, I'm going to be using, jumping between the chained and the uh, muds. I'm kind of... For some situations, these muds are pretty solid. Like I use them on the Tager. Um, and I don't really use the Taz or the Warthog that much, if I'm honest. After I reviewed them and played around with them, I've not really uh, used them since. Even the ANK, though, recently has had these tyres on. And in some situations, they're good. But then you hit places like this. Anything that would be kind of considered to me, like even fairly shallow to medium dirt roads, like when you got mud and water, that kind of combination, these tyres are just they're not necessarily bad as in once you're going slow they do grip in relatively well and they'll at least keep you going through it but it's they seem to have like a really low bar for what counts as quote unquote like the super mud and the super snow they just stop dead so easily like it almost stops me there and um, yeah once it is going slow though like I say it usually is able to just keep scraping through but yeah they just feel too unrealistic when you hit some patches where the mud's like you know an inch or two deep or something the same with the snow it just doesn't quite feel right but then the chain as well like I said they're not the mud chain they're the uh, off-road chain thing and 
yeah, they're just not not the same either. There's certainly situations, well, obviously going on the uh, icy maps, all that, that they make more sense. They still cut in pretty well along on mud sections like this, but yeah, they're just not quite not quite the muds that I enjoy on the uh, trucks like the Dolphin and I don't know a lot of the Vorons, all that sort of stuff. It motors along pretty nicely through here, though. Once you're in high range, it, uh, yeah, it does tickle on quite nicely. Like I said, removing the roof rack, one, I think that's helped kind of overall, but as of also, it's a bit of a gut feeling. A few people have been kind of guesstimating the same things, but the new map seems to have, like, extra terrain resistance, and it slow feels like it slows you down even more. Some of the other trucks are feeling like they've been tampered with a little bit. Uh, going back onto these sort of maps, though, um, yeah, again, it's hard to call it 100%, but it does feel a little bit more, I don't know, like we were all hoping it would kind of feel, basically. like it, it, Yeah, it's been holding up pretty well tonight. It's uh, And again, though, I've never said it's a terrible truck. I don't think it is. I think it's an above-average truck. I think it would have been one of the usable trucks in the lineup if we got it from, uh, like, the start of the game. But, yeah, six or seven months in, I suppose, like... I'm just sort of wondering, it's like, where are they actually, not where are they going, but at what point are they just going to be like, yeah, sod it, <laughs> if people have paid their money, let's just add some fun stuff without finding a way to restrict it all the time. Everything sort of feels like you turned up a bit late to the party, <laughs> it's like, well, it could have been good, but they had to, they had to somehow, like, yeah, give with one hand, take with the other, like, they give you something good, but then they have to give you some kind of punishment for having a potentially good thing. I just switched there, by the way. You'll see, I mean, I've done these courses. Like, I do a lot more than ends up in these reviews, but it'd be like a five or six hour video if that was the case. Uh, I've just, I'm in the chain now going over. The footage glitched when I was driving over these rocks in the mud. Pretty much identical situation. I got, like, the other one damage. As far as damage goes, uh, yeah, it still does seem pretty terrible. I said the other day when I was exploring that big salmon peak. <laughs> it definitely sounds a bit dodgy. Um that maybe the damage mechanics are calmed down but obviously yeah in experience since then like it just it does keep nailing me i think i just got a lucky run particularly at the start when i went around with the uh the dolphin and loaf because i kept taking quite a lot of hits on the dolphin but they were all doing like one suspension damage which not only i'm fine with i kind of like that because yeah overall i don't mind like an accelerated damage you know like you pick up bits here and there so overall once you've done a night's driving around or whatever you've uh, you've collected some damage but yeah I must have just got lucky because I've I've since hit random bumps or uh, not even really could call it a bump and it's ended up wiping out half my suspension and all sorts so this thing I hit the uh, anti-terrorist barricades they got me pretty good I think it nearly flipped me but not quite and um, this thing hasn't really got a lot of engine health if I'm honest when I originally just crashed into the trees a minute ago it damaged it already into the red so I recovered and drove back there I've damaged it now since, like, on the terrorist barricade and that, but I ain't, uh, I'm not, I, if I keep going back, I'll keep getting to here with a damaged engine, pretty much. I think it's only got about 100 health or something, because I'm sure I hit one of the trees earlier and it took about 26 off me, and it looked like it had taken about a quarter of the health. So, yeah, that can, uh, add up fairly quick. This is a quick blast through here, just in the chain, and, yeah, they're not doing too bad, like, they're sort of... I'd say they're cutting through a bit quicker than the custom muds did on some sections, but then when you slightly get out of those boggier sections, they're kind of about as laggy and wheel spinny and just overall not a perfect uh, choice. Not my wouldn't be my first pick for tyres, but uh, overall you can say I'm in high range. I'm kind of motoring along again now. It cut through that section a lot better, which is where like the custom muds absolutely got stopped dead there practically, and that's where they keep catching you out. Whereas this does cut through quite a lot of things. <laughs> Goddamn American flag. Gets me quite a lot. We don't mess around. Uh, cutting through here in high range, it was just about biting into the snow. They usually slow down around now. This thing sits pretty nice and tall, so as far as getting over these, like it was a piece of piss with both tyres. I tried these, obviously it's chained. Got over there, no issues. And uh, in a second, or pretty soon anyway, I'll, uh, I'll have a go over in the muds. Yeah, as far as tipping goes, I mean, I didn't even get a chance really to go up the rock before it just flinged itself over. This is the mud through the snow though, and as you can see, just instantly, just unrealistic levels, like surely a truck with eight tyres like that, <laughs> that are all spinning, 
you couldn't go that slow in mud. Or I mean in snow. Just surely you'd have to like be propelled forward to some degree quicker than half a mile an hour anyway. It's like driving through a treacle or something. As you can see, I kind of slowed down a bit. The, those tyres just won't even consider biting out down onto the rock, but the chained weren't that great either, to be honest. This thing, where well, you'll see later, it's like, it's not got a hell of a lot of weight to it. Certainly not as weighted as, uh, yeah, some of the other trucks that are similar size. So next up, though, climbing over here, this little kind of random... It sort of acts like super snow quite a lot, this stuff. But as you can see, I mean, it cuts through pretty well. There's certainly stuff that's been slower through there. And I'm just staying in auto. I've tended to find that you'll see a few times throughout the night. I keep putting it in uh, to in low range in certain sections. And overall, there just doesn't feel like any gain. It pretty much seems to sit similar revs. But at least in auto, you have that option that it... Like, there is less harsh rev caps. So... There might be a situation where it will feed a few more revs in. Yeah, the low range really just kind of limits you. Not to say I never use it, but for some people that say, why don't I go into low more? Auto, like I said, it's got more free rev range. And uh, I also have instant access to reverse. Like, just kind of a natural reaction by now. When something's about to go wrong, you squeeze the reverse trigger and it catches me out here, there and everywhere. If I'm in low and I do that, it obviously doesn't do anything. And uh, that few seconds of having to be like, oh yeah, shit, <laughs> flick it back into auto or whatever, is, uh, that can be all it takes to make you go flying off a mountain. Pretty happy with uh, how it managed to jump over that wall, though. Nailed it. Funny enough, though, and I was kind of surprised about this himself. This is one of these things again, though. It's not really got a lot of weight and grip. Got to these uh, tree branches. It absolutely just was not letting me through at all. Obviously, I tried for longer than... I'm going to leave in the video, but most things are usually at least push through a bit further than that. And they, uh, yeah, that's with the chain on at the minute. That's why I'm bringing these muds back. And it gets over there pretty nice with these muds as well. Like I say, because it sits quite nice and high, there's not really a front bumper that's particularly annoying and in the way. But yeah, with eight of these sort of muds like they uh, they grip in well enough at the low speed like it bumps over the barriers which is nice because every now and then I uh, yeah you might find a little shortcut where you need to jump over them but they're now in the super snow for all intents and purposes they may as well be like slick drag racing tyres because <laughs> they really just don't bite in like they look like they should and uh, yeah, these were the muds either. They just can't get through there. Can't penetrate that bush. God damn it. So in the end, I uh, stuck a winch on the back. Winch to one of the trees to my right or left now. And uh, yeah, once I kind of got the nose through it, it obviously dragged the back end through pretty easily. But that sits a lot lower. So yeah, I, I mean, that is what it is. That's where I think if it had a bit more weight, particularly low down, not only would that help with the rolling situation, but it would actually, I assume, plant the uh, truck a bit firmer into the ground. I mean, stuff like the Tager pushes through that absolutely like first time every time, basically. And that's got, again, you can have the custom muds, but there'd be like one less axle, one less lot of grip. Um, yeah, the turning circle, as you can see there in the yard, pretty bad to be honest um, yeah it, it didn't go too well uh, it went pretty wide I kind of had to clip off the garage door a little bit it's not the end of the world uh, to be honest the overall turning circle isn't the biggest thing for me but it's that it kind of has a split personality on when it wants to turn and when it doesn't and it depends like what revs you're in if your weight's tipping forwards or backwards or whatever but sometimes it can understeer like mad and you barely turn other times I apologise, there was a little uh, glitch there. It suddenly just bites in and goes, you know, pretty bloody quick. And um, yeah, cutting through here, fortunately, it's only just me turning the corner that it cut out, but still, it's been a bit of a troll tonight for uh, bugging out and that. Yeah, cutting across here, though, I've only got the, well, I'll say only, it's the uh, five slot semi trailer. Seems pretty small now, now we've got that uh, big eight slot thing, which I do like driving that eight slot trailer around, but yeah, its legs sit quite far back and pretty bloody low on it and it just keeps catching everything 
like if you remember any of you seen fairly recent videos that trailer I quite like that I believe is a five slot trailer like a step deck trailer or something even though that's quite a long low slung trailer that kind of acts like a sledge across everything and it's just yeah you can drag it all over the place whereas that eight slot I've definitely uh, it's caught me out yeah a fair bit here and there this by the way I'm kind of going to give it a bit of a pass here because I suddenly realised that branch that kind of there's like a big root that goes along the floor you just see it ping off the second axle there um yeah i'm basically stuck on that which is certainly not a selling point for the truck like there is other trucks that have drove through here and managed to get over that route however for the first like two thirds of review videos i did um i don't even think that route was there it seemed to appear like a couple of months ago and uh, it started catching quite a few trucks out so once I winch myself over that route, like now it's driving along fine again, so that's the only section that I got stuck in. Um, yeah, and like you say, as soon as I've seen the route ping off, it kind of improves the situation, so I'll sort of give it a free pass on that, but it's still not great. Again, these tyres don't bite in as well as the uh, the chained muds. Going through here though, water, even that little deep patch there, it basically didn't stop, and uh, yeah, it's motoring along pretty bloody well through here pretty happy with that situation. I also turned it <laughs> just perfectly timed on that one because uh, that corner as you ramp out of there can be a bit of a troll because as you bump off the ground it kind of can make your steering float a bit for, but for whatever reason I caught it nicely there and got around the corner first time. Normally stuff that understeers or doesn't have a very good steering angle doesn't do well on that corner. And uh, yeah squeeze through that rock gap pretty nicely. It's not the widest thing in the world. If I had the chained muds, uh, sorry the custom muds on. I bet it would have clipped those rocks a little bit but I still think it would get through there uh, just fine like I've drove a lot of wider things through there even got stuff like the P16 and that through there so it should be right. Yeah when you get to these sort of roads where you've actually got the tracks in the roads as you can see it uh, picks up speed pretty nicely and that's where I do prefer these chain because the custom muds if you so much as touch the edge of like one of these sort of roads they just they just practically stop you dead again you go like half a mile an hour and it's uh it doesn't even make sense because it's like one of your eight tires is clipping two inches of snow uh yeah that just wouldn't happen in real life <laughs> hit the bump that hard then i just think i see my own head it's pretty messed up shit when you think about it i mean it's motoring pretty bloody nice here though along here <laughs> barely keep up but this is more my style of driving uh yeah i've got things i want to do <laughs> places i want to go things i want to see I can see it all at 20 mile an hour. I don't need to be going 2 miles an hour everywhere. But again, I've been playing this game for a while. It's like I've already been there and done that in a lot of cases. That's where it's kind of like, yeah, I'm usually interested in a bit more speed now. It's, it's like I suppose you get a racing game. At the start of the game, you tend to have the slower cars, and that's fair enough. But there comes a time where, yeah, you want all the good stuff. You don't want to go uh, hurtling like a maniac across the map. At least the option is uh, nice to have. I mean, overall, it's cutting pretty nicely through there. That little muddy bit back there. Like, you know, above average performance. Nothing great, though. There's a little bit of trollish damage that it's getting. You see, even high, though, it does tick along pretty well. But like I said, I will be using this and that. I've kind of, especially after doing these reviews tonight, I've sort of... Yeah, it's helped me pin down a few characteristics. That's why I like doing these review videos, because other than when I get to this point, I'm actually making the video. Obviously, I've just spent all night testing it on every, not every map, but certainly every kind of terrain and all sorts, and uh, I already know how the other vehicles fared. So, yeah, it's, it's a, like a very good benchmark. I, I quite like finding out for myself. I've been driving this thing around for the last three or four days or whatever, uh, and that was all that was left, really. I was like, well, I kind of know how it handles, but... The last thing to do is, uh, yeah, send it through the same same course, and that'll, uh, yeah, help give us a clearer picture. I mean, again, in the snow, it has patches where it's pretty bloody slow. I was trying the low range and the auto. Again, the auto, it was pretty much the same speed in snow regardless, but every now and then when I got to a shallow patch of snow, the auto could take advantage of that, and it'll wind up the speed. The low range was already kind of at its max limit anyway, so you never really get like a little speed boost when you hit a little patch of non-trollish snow. 
I'm cutting through here. I brought the custom muds back for this one because it's a mud section. Everything goes like, say, roughly this slow anyway through here. So in that sense, I still think these are now have the edge over the chained. But these also revert to going this slow, even if the mud was like a lot shallower. But it is ticking along. It is actually getting through there. It, I'd say a big thing that helps with this one, like it does sit quite nice and high, but the front bumper hasn't gone deep enough that that's scraping. Once that starts happening, it's uh, yeah, not good, but like I say, it's pretty slow, slow but steady though. It did drive out at this speed. I ended up, uh, I didn't use the winch or anything, which is pretty nice. Uh, next up, I have a little trip in the mountains. That's another reason I bought the uh, muds as well though, because they sit wider. I mean, I'm still going to make it tip in the mountains regardless, but yeah, if I was going to drive in this kind of situation, I would bring the custom muds, if I can help it anyway, because uh, yeah, I mean, there, the chained they could possibly have like they would have been thinking about it I know that much <laughs> as for a bumper test I thought it would have done a little bit better there but not quite it's just digging in certainly thinking about tipping there as well so I was just trying to go a bit of a shallower angle but the chassis flex going on in some ways, apart from when it can like help you tip over, I do kind of like the chassis flex. I feel like it's... I don't know if I'd say realistic on this particular truck, but just generally speaking, I do kind of appreciate that it, there's the potential for it rather than just a completely programmed solid chassis. Because, yeah, I'd say uh, chassis flex to a degree is certainly a thing in real life. And it just looks pretty cool. It's one of them when you're smashing down over the rocks and stuff and you see your chassis flexing away, it's... Uh, yeah pretty good lets you know you're, <laughs> you're giving it a good old workout and um, as for the rolling test I mean it went sort of one and a quarter times wasn't able to get back to his wheels so of course it's time to send in the goddamn horse of a vehicle but this is a nice benchmark as well because I mean, I've rescued just about everything there is to be rescued with a loaf but how easy or hard it tends to be I think though if I had the roof rack on that would make things I'd say, yeah, more difficult, but it's not really difficult. It's just that the bandit then doesn't want to flip back to its wheels. You just end up dragging it sideways all over the bloody place, and it's like, it's not... I don't know. There's a, at that point, I'd say it's irrelevant of the winch strength. It's like, if I'm just pulling it sideways along the floor, then, yeah, it's not the winch strength an issue. I need the thing to bite in so I can actually flip it over. Um, as soon as I drove forward, I rolled again, so... See? Loaf knows exactly what he's doing. <laughs> he catches him. Goddamn professional. That's why you get sold a loaf. See, this thing does look pretty cool when it's sat there with the uh, like the custom muds on. I easily prefer the look of it with the custom muds. And to be fair, in this kind of mountain setting, this sort of snow, you're already going to be going bloody slow anyway, so... Um, yeah, I think the muds are pretty good. This part of the reason, like, back in some of the review videos months ago, I usually bring the Taiga to rescue stuff, well, Taiga and a loaf usually, to rescue stuff in the mountains. That was part of the reason I left the custom muds on the Taiga, because they just, uh, they work pretty nicely up in this, like, mountain section. Like, higher up the mountains, anyway, if you go lower down the mountains, it's more like the typical super snow and you go very slow. Once you're up at, like, the top half of the mountains, it calms down the whole snow resistance stats and everything behaves a bit more naturally and more realistic than I'd say. I mean, as you can see, it's not horrifically bad for rolling, but it certainly ain't up there with the best of them. It certainly ain't up there with this goddamn professional. I mean, look at him, like a little mountain goat. So, of course, as usual... To send them in to save the day, and yeah, I mean, a particularly gut feeling without the uh, roof rack, it's a hell of a lot easier just to ping back to its wheels. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> hang on, loaf. See though, he knows what he's doing. He gets him back to its wheels. Sadly, it glitched. Now I did actually remain on my wheels, then I reversed down the hill. I rolled, but yeah, as you can see, it's goddamn professional. Just can't keep a good loaf down. Keeps going. And that's what I like about the loaf. Now I don't have to go back to the garage, drive something else out here, etc, etc. 
And uh, yeah, I'll probably have gone slightly over my uh, usual <laughs> daily dose of loaf, but I've got a good excuse. It's my birthday today, so I'm blaming it on that. Not that I've needed any reason for the last seven odd months, but <laughs> still get to blame it on this once a year. So it's pretty good. I'm pretty certain that I'm the only person that's ever been born today. So I've called dibs on it. I'm sorry to anybody else, but you're going to have to pick a new birthday because, yeah, I claimed this one. This is <laughs> this is loaf day. I was actually supposed to be born in uh, on January the 1st, I believe, but, you know, shit to do, people to see, <laughs> places to be. When I was born, I was like, I was tiny. I was, uh, apparently I could fit in the sleeve of, like, a doll's clothes, and, uh, yeah, I was yellow. I looked like a little banana, because I had jaundice. They put me in an incubi in the incubator, tried cooking me up for some reason, not really sure why, and then, yeah, like an oven-ready baby <laughs> when I was done. When I was cooked just right, they released me. Released me into the wild. And uh, yeah, 32 years later, <laughs> we've made it. We've got ourselves a loaf. Got a goddamn professional. Things are going well. Next up though, we're on to uh, Quarry. And I've got the loaf behind me for now. But I'll, uh, I'll release him in a second because, yeah, I like to see how they kind of, how the trucks go through here on their own. And what we got, uh, yeah, they chained. The, uh, the second choice chained. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it is still ticking along. I wouldn't say it's amazing. There's certainly things that uh, cut through a lot quicker. But yeah, overall, I mean, it doesn't feel like it's going to get stuck or anything either, so... It's not best case scenario, but uh, yeah, I mean, it'll get you by pretty, pretty well. Well enough. And again, I do quite like when you stick it in high range. It, yeah, it's fairly easy to get into the high gear. I certainly do take the piss with it a bit and uh, try and jump in it a bit quick. But generally speaking, it can uh, wind its way up in high gear and ticks along pretty nicely. So next up, the old clip. I didn't think it'd be an issue here. I suppose if I tried approaching on too much of an angle, it uh, could have rolled itself. Did clip its bumper there, though. But I think it has got quite spongy suspension. Like, it does sit pretty nice and high, so if you're just driving along, like, as far as getting over rocks or, like, ledges, all that sort of thing, or potentially, anyway, um, yeah, but then going down that hill, obviously, once it punched down on the front suspension, yeah, bumper met the, uh, met the hill. So, grab some concrete slabs. Tried to have a go into high. <laughs> That's what I mean. Try me luck, but it was not having it. So in this bit, kind of uh, surprised me a little bit, to be honest. Kind of looks like it's thinking about tipping. I mean, it didn't go, but you can see the trailer's kind of, yeah. I certainly don't think it'll be uh, impossible to tip there. But yeah, it got to about here. And, uh, well, I wouldn't really say it ran out of power. It ran out of grip. Well, but that's the funny thing you'll see in a minute. First thing, though... It's supposed to be diff locks on, yeah, that third axle, that side's spinning, that side isn't, so there's definitely, it doesn't feel like it's behaving like diffs are on at the minute. But I just let it roll back a bit, and I noticed this the other day uh, with the cat as well, like, I just reapplied the power, and yeah, I've noticed that since this update, that sometimes it seems to keep doing that, where it's like, it just cuts all your power out for, a f well, maybe a few seconds, I, I usually blip the throttle a bit quicker, because I'm doing the review and that, trying to get up the hill, I was just kind of squeezing the throttle for a bit and seeing what had happened. Um, yeah, like I said, it's done it to me a few times. It did it a few times yesterday when I was driving the cat round. I think it did it in this the other day. It did it in something else the other day, but I honestly can't remember um, what it was. But yeah, once got past that little hurdle, it managed to get up this next bit. Kind of not too confidently, but it made it. It got it up there just... And as you can see with these uh, chain, yeah, there's like it's still driving along, but there's a little bit of wheel spin in there. There's like there tends to be quite a lot with this truck anyway. So next up though, it's the third quarry hill, and again, as you'll see, well there, it just seems like the power just vanishes again for a, uh, a second or so, and now it's going. So here like the rev caps though almost it's like they've just died down but I suppose that's because the wheels have let go that third axle again one of them spinning one of them isn't so I'm still not convinced about the whole diff's always on situation 
Um, yeah, they seem to keep mixing and matching when they win a wheel spin and when they don't. But as you can see now, mostly, there's like not really a lot of guts to it going on. And uh, yeah, I thought I wasn't going to make it, so I brought the goddamn horse vehicle with me. He's now at the top of the hill. But then I just wanted to drive, drive this thing a bit further up and fling a winch out to it. However, apologies there, it did a little glitch. It was like, as soon as I touched that rock, I just carried on going forward. So it only glitched about a second, but it was probably like the worst second there is. I would honestly go back and get the footage, but I don't think I could even recreate like how close it was kind of thing. I had about seven or eight attempts going up that hill. Like I said, in the end, I brought the uh, loaf along. And then, yeah, it just the last go. For whatever reason, it just about got enough grip and it uh, made it up there. So, yeah, a bit hit and miss, but um, I've had to help quite a few vehicles. Uh, well, I got to like the brow of the hill kind of thing. I had to stick a winch on the tree to get myself over, but I'll give it a pass on that because most trucks do. It's more that the trailer then starts catching on like this little rock ledge. Flying down here, though. <laughs> I always like flying down here. It did pretty well. Didn't tip over or anything. Smash my way through them trailers. <laughs> I don't really know where I was going now. Well, I was going to just try and go to the edge and uh, drop the trailer off. But then what I thought, I wanted to try that little... Uh, like, there's a little rock hill sort of behind me that I wanted to try driving up. I mean, that shows you there with the kind of understeering, lack of steering. Particularly, yeah, when you're accelerating like in first, that's when it obviously dumps a lot of the weight into the back. And there's just not a lot there. So get used to doing like three point turns or five point turns. And then some. So yeah, I was just going to do a loop around my trailer so I can get kind of more of a run up that I usually get on the uh, little rock hill that I'm going to try and jump up. But sadly... Even leaning against that red trailer, it started to go. Of course, you know what time it means. This is a goddamn professional time. <laughs> Just going the hard way because I can. Duck and roll, loaf. He knows what he's doing, though. It's not his first rodeo. See, so yeah, at this point, <laughs> I just do it because I can. Because I believe in the goddamn horse or the vehicle. And on this one as well, I've only got the, uh, what you call it, the autonomous winch at the minute, so I've not got the full reach, so just then I reversed down the hill a bit, dragged the trailer a little bit nearer so I could, like, get to the peak of the hill. And, uh, yeah, I tend to find, though, you're better off trying to lever the bandit over from the trailer. And, uh, yeah, just like so, you see. Saves the day again and again. So, uh, yeah, for this one, though, I brought the custom muds back. I had a feeling they'd probably... Or hopefully fare a little bit better. Obviously already going to be going like this slow rain. Yeah, I managed to get up that first bit. So without like cutting out or anything. But kind of looks like it thought about it there. But then uh, it carried on. It's probably slightly bordering on grip. Again, I mean it's getting up here. But it's not. It's close if you know what I mean. It's a. Uh, it's not just motoring up there. If I was winching something else behind me as well, it might cause a thing. Yeah, when I got to this bit, though, that's where, like, the muds do really start to slip. The chain kind of bit in a bit better there once they're actually on that little trollish bit. Because of the understeering, I kept hitting that post. Took me a few attempts to, like, reverse back and etc. And, uh, yeah, I'm another go at this hill. And overall, I think these are definitely... Well, they're maintaining, they're still wheel spinning, but they're actually crawling up there. Well, until I get to this bit again, which I'm going to winch to the tree. But I kind of, the reason I count that as a pass is a lot of things can't even get high enough up there to reach the tree with the winch. If it gets close enough that it can reach the tree, then I kind of class that. If I can get up, you know, on my own with a winch or whatever, I still count that. Uh, for the hell of it just flew down there with these these tyres pretty similar to be honest did capture its bumper there though but it didn't tip over so next up I was actually quite surprised about this this kind of shows you the uh, lack of weight I suppose 
I thought it was absolutely just going to punch through immediately. And it did eventually start to go. But this is more than the vast majority of certainly trucks this size. You might get like the, uh, I think the Taz, possibly the Warthog does alright along here. I think the F750 got over here pretty nicely. But yeah, I mean certainly trucks this sort of size, things like the Dolphin and that sort of thing punch through pretty quickly whereas this again I brought the muds back like I've kind of I don't know really I think I'd keep picking between them depending what map I'm on that flooded foothills map I probably still would go with the chained just because these will end up behaving like ridiculously slow for a lot of the uh, muddy sections and that but yeah in certain situations I, uh, I do like these muds like I say I want to like them <laughs> I just wish they could do with a bit of a tweak overall. But it's pretty cool though, this thing was actually uh, managing to drive over the ice. I'm now driving down the length of it, so... I mean, again, I did that with some of the lighter vehicles, but... I can't think of many, if any, trucks, certainly not this size, that would be doing that. So, that is finally some kind of uh, advantage it seems to have. As I said though, I think that does... Yeah, give another hint that... I mean, it's not the lightest vehicle in the world, but there's certainly not really a hell of a lot of weight in the chassis. There might be, like, a little bit of weight in the wheels, etc. And the cab's not overly weighty either. It's just... Yeah, it's not... It doesn't lean towards, like, the lower end. because I already drove up the river that way it was uh, breaking a little bit easy there but all things considered like I said most trucks are just punched straight through anyway so it's certainly uh, yeah doing better and even though it kind of punched through there it's still had enough I mean that's one good thing though with the custom muds particularly is uh, they, are, they do sit very wide that does hold you back in a lot of situations where speed is trying to be an objective but in very slow situations like that anyway. Yeah, you've spread your weight out a lot and the fact that this has got eight wheels on it. So that's another two more than the Tager, for example. I think because of the broken suspension it managed to get back to its wheels there. If that suspension wasn't broken, I really don't think that would have uh, would have been able to do it. So I came back with the chained, just trying to do the uh, Jeff special. Stuck it in high range and uh, yeah, it does do it, which is pretty good. Funny enough though, a lot of the trucks don't do it for me if it's got the diffs always on. And this thing did it pretty much every time, so that's another thing that potentially gives me a hint that the uh, the diffs aren't quite behaving as they should be. So I suppose this has ended up being, it's just that river uh, in flooded foothills that I keep cutting across, but it's quite a good benchmark. I've been taking quite a lot of things over here. And this thing can certainly get caught by the current a bit, so preferably you want to cut across on an angle. If you just try and go fully sideways, it will tip pretty much every time. But yeah, it actually did pretty pretty decently through there. I certainly wouldn't complain about that. I took yeah, a fair few things through there, and uh, that was not too bad. Then you get back to the, the super mud. And it's a yeah, 90% wheel spin, 10% <laughs> moving forward. Nice little drift there, didn't dig in and try and roll itself, which is nice. Not to say that it never would, but um, yeah, there's a lot of trucks that easily would have done it by then. But now it picks up pretty nice speed going down here. Trying to keep it straight. To be fair, it wasn't as difficult as I thought it'd be for its speed. I mean, I certainly did drift sideways here and there, but I was able to correct it a few times. Normally, a lot of things, especially when they're fast... Once it goes and it starts drifting sideways, it's like it's anyone's guess. As far as distance goes, not too bad. That's pretty, pretty respectable little jump. Funnily enough, now though, it looks like it's floating, which I was uh, pretty surprised about. Eventually, it started to tip. Now is the point where the snorkel goes under, so it may have eventually settled on its wheels, but it's certainly extremely slow at doing it. So I had to bring the dolphin in a loaf, and you yeet your loaf off a cliff. <laughs> I know we get bored of doing that, looking around. Oh yeah, they've done that lockable physics again. You see? It's just a goddamn horse of a vehicle. 
He knows what he's doing. He doesn't let a bit of stoppable physics get in the way of a good time. So first up, got to rescue the old dolphin. Well, I don't have to, but, you know. Because I can, let's be honest. <laughs> it never, never gets the winch point you want. You can usually get it in the basic area, but, yeah. <laughs> never grab that top one. But, just a mere formality and that was done. And then, uh, yeah, sending the loaf in to pull the bandit out just to see, like, is it a bit of an awkward sod of some vehicles, especially when they're in that deep, they're, uh, yeah, can be a bit of a pain in the ass, this thing. Absolutely walking it out, no issue, so. Again, that's another thing that tells me it is pretty light. Overall, anyway, certainly for a truck, like, for the size of it and everything. Jobs are good, and so I fixed it. Well, I fixed most of it. The fuel tank and suspension doesn't really matter. I fixed the engine completely. So we'll go for a uh, quick drowning test. And yeah, the snorkel, it's not quite up to the roof. So it's already getting me now. It's basically blocked by that mirror, but there you can see it there on the left-hand side. It's about the same height as the top of the mirror. It might start giving you damage a tiny bit sooner than it looks. I've noticed that with a few other vehicles. It reversed out the water just fine though, and then uh, yeah, sticking her back in, seeing how deep we can go. I'm just going to try and go flat out and see see what happens. Really, it's already starting to drown. So, I mean, comparatively, if it had like a snorkel at the back of its cab at the top, I wouldn't even quite be underwater yet. So the dolphin should be able to get to about here without even uh, drowning at this point. This thing is about killed the engine at the same time as it. Uh, got to about that, I don't think you'll be getting much further either way. I do believe it does start to float, uh, if not fully, it's certainly on the verge it seems of floating, so you, it feels like it lifted a lot of the weight off the wheels and it, yeah, it just wasn't really doing a whole lot through there. So that's about it, that's sent it through the course. Um, yeah, overall it's certainly, it's about kind of where I've been, my gut feeling's been saying, like, it is an above average truck, it has got pretty decent power, it can go, you know, pretty much all places. It's just one of them, it's not not quite where uh, I think we're all kind of hoping this far into the game it was going to be. Hopefully mods can adjust that. I mean, I suppose one of the biggies is just more tyre selection. If you could have the chain muds, I think that would help this thing a lot just as far as travelling-wise goes. Then, obviously, if you've got the custom muds if you want the uh, lack of tipping. Um, yeah, it was about, I believe, was it like 150 grand odd when I got it all done up. So it's not the most expensive, not the cheapest. There's just a description there saying, like, why they built it. It was just to, I think, just to prove they could make an 8x8. I think that's why it's got some mad over-complicated... Uh, when you look at all the diffs and prop shafts and everything underneath, it's all a bit... Yeah, a bit crazy. It looks pretty cool, though. So, and last up, I just uh, I thought I'd take it out quickly test it up this mountain as I've ended up sending quite a few of the other things up here. And yeah, I was even able to stick it in high on my way up. Which I had a feeling it would. The snow and everything calms down like higher up. Quick little pose, possible thumbnail. And uh, now I just wanted to see. Could I do a little free willy jump? Oh yes. Yeah, <laughs> good times. Quick belly flop. Fortunately though. Overall, I've been, well, I'd say pretty lucky tonight with uh, getting back onto my wheels. I do believe the roof rack makes a big difference in that. And now, just a quick last one. Uh, I'm doing the Jeff special in high range. Got a bit sideways. I kept it pinned, fingers crossed. Oh no, loaf, hold your ground. What a goddamn professional. He knows. <laughs> so, yeah. Bit of chassis flex there, I'll see. All right, send in the professional. Bit of data. Is it just me? It feels like I keep setting it to 1 p.m. or like 1300 hours. Uh, yeah, it just feels like it goes or starts to go dark pretty quickly. Well, not dark, but like you know, not midday. It almost feels like it's uh, evening quite a lot of the time. So yeah, I find myself. Uh, keep changing the time a hell of a lot more these days. Can you see? First time. He's goddamn professional. Save the bandit. We're going in though. 
get it back on its wheels. The loaf doesn't stop until the job's done. So yeah, that's about it for today though. I mean, it's overall, I'd keep one on you. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to still keep driving it. It's not a miracle truck, but yeah. That's about it for today though. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Get yourself a loaf and I'll be back soon.